Welcome to the High Voltage Light Electric Vehicle Channel. I've spent a lot of time and late doing lots of different kinds of testing with different motors and it's not left me as much time as I'd really like to discuss different aspects of technology and news that's in the ever-growing sector of e-bikes and I guess light electric vehicles. So I've decided to set aside a time once a week to look at some of the news and then we can chat about it in the comments and on Discord as well. And if it's something that's popular and people like it, maybe I can turn it into something live. Although finding a time that suits everybody might be hard, especially on like a Friday when you have you know a community that spans like a great many different time zones. Anyway, this first one, I'm gonna look at some of the cool stuff that Grintech has just announced, as well as a battery that, at least on paper, might give the, the Molly Cell P42A a bit of competition. Uh, feel free to post suggestions in the comments if there's something that you want me to look at, and I'll also put a section on, on Discord for people to make suggestions as well. So the first thing here to look at is something from Grin, and it's to do with their what they call the all axle hub motor and this is like a really cool hub because it's designed to work with any axle type so you've got kind of inserts here and you can change those out so it can work with pretty much any i think it can work with with any type of axle so like 12 millimeter 16 millimeter uh, you can use it with quick release skewers as well they're also now making this for fat bikes um, so it's going to be a bit wider, a bit bulkier for use with fat bikes. And unlike a lot of hubs that you can get, these will actually work out of the gate with regen brakes. And regen brakes with, with hubs for e-bikes is actually less common than you might think, even though it kind of makes obvious sense to use regen with a hub motor, because in theory it, it's easier to use uh, regen with, with hub motors. So the main update here though, seems to be the addition of torque sensing and making the torque sensor an integral part of the hub motor. And I've not really seen this type of design. I haven't come across this before. The torque sensors I've always seen have been either pressure based in the pedals or strain based as part of the bottom bracket itself. And I'm assuming that there is a strain gauge inside of this unit and that will be activated when the chain is, is pulled on like through the cranks when it's stressed. I don't see how it can be quite as responsive as something in the bottom bracket, but for simplicity of installation, it, it's pretty hard to fault it. Uh, this next one uh, is, is quite a big one in that Grin are well known for making a phase runner, but it's kind of let down at least in my opinion, by having to use the cycle analyst display with it, which is, it's pretty old. Um, it basically looks kind of like having a calculator on the front of your bike. And this device here is basically uh, a signal processing unit. And it removes the need to have the cycle analyst and also allows Grin to use things like proportional braking with a throttle. And by proportional, I presume, I presume they're meaning the same thing as the variable regen um, that we call it, that we use with a uh, reverse throttle. Not only does this unit let you use like these APT displays, it also comes with the option to use some new peripherals. So there's wiring up here for uh, the e-brake and also a brake light. So I'm presuming when you activate the e-brake, you also automatically then get on a brake light, which is excellent. I think that's something that would really improve safety, uh, which is a very important thing when you're riding e-bikes. I'm like quite a big proponent of unleashing light electric vehicles to run at higher speeds and power. So things like brakes and lights and signals are things that will be really quite important here. They actually have uh, a couple of examples of peripherals uh, that they're talking about. The brake lever here when activated I believe will gradually increase the amount of regen braking depending on how far it's pulled. I'm kind of hoping that you, you would have the regen activate first and then by pulling it all the way in, you would then activate 
like a regular break. And that would also then activate the rear light at the same time. I'm hoping that they'll also provide an option to work with hydraulic brakes or make something that lets you um, upgrade your existing brakes because this is clearly for a mechanical style brake and like mechanical disc brakes don't don't really cut it for heavier e-bikes. Like I've, I've tried them. The second peripheral is this dual use throttle and I'm not I'm not keen on how this one looks. Presumably you use your thumb here to accelerate and also to activate the regen by rolling your thumb across with this part bolting on to your your handlebar. And I don't know, it just looks really uncomfortable. I, I can't imagine using this for any length of time on a ride and not end up being in discomfort like especially if using gloves or when it's cold like imagine holding your hand on this and then put your thumb in that position right to roll and then imagine doing that over like an extended extended period of time like, it just doesn't feel like that would be something that that i would want to do maybe i'm wrong uh, if you've used this type of throttle maybe you can tell me how amazing it is we have looked at a couple of half twist throttles that do this kind of thing where you can twist back like to accelerate and roll forward all on the same throttle uh, in order to activate the braking and I, I, I do like the concept it's just that on the ones we've looked at the the resolution or the range of modulation it is not that great so you don't have enough voltage range really to allow for a smooth application uh, particularly of the regen braking it, it's okay for the throttle part but when it comes to the braking that there's not enough range so it tends to be on or off that's not really the point then of having regen braking that that's variable out of the two of these i think i would rather use the regen lever i i, I do like the idea of having it on a brake lever because then it's kind of natural like people expect to use a brake lever for braking. People less used to using a throttle for, for braking. The last thing that they've got on this is a battery, which I haven't seen before, um, but I can do some more digging to this if people would like. But it looks like this is a 36 volt battery and each of these units are 2.75 amp hours and you can plug them together to get a larger battery if you want to. So I, I don't actually know how this one works. Uh, it looks interesting. I think this might be part of their drive to make a safer battery system. So that battery kind of leads us on to the last thing that I wanted to talk about today, which is potentially a couple of new cells in the 21700 format. Actually, when I first saw these cells, they were listed on a website section dealing with lithium ferrous polymer batteries. So for just a split second, I thought there was going to be a lithium ferrous polymer battery in the 21700 format. But then I saw the energy density and the voltage and it just didn't make sense, which is a shame because it would be a real game changer if there was a lithium ferrous cell in the 21700 format because people could just then use those in existing configurations and swap over to what is uh, a safer chemistry. So what we have though here is two new cells and the first of them is higher power and it's called the, the 40PL and that's this one here. This one actually utilizes this tabless design that Tesla were talking about I think a couple of years ago now. This is the first time that I've seen it in a cell that I think could be used um, for DIY builders. In theory, this design allows for a higher current or a higher continuous current. Whether it can do this like 100 amps that they're claiming is another question. They sort of then kind of contradict themselves by saying 500 cycles at 50 amps. It also says they perform really well at low temperatures uh, down to minus 40, which is pretty impressive. I'm always very cautious with claims about batteries because the technology develops quite slowly. And when claims are made of like sort of 
game changing performance like this and that you, you have to be a bit suspect but even if these are like approaching the level of performance like that they're saying here you could build yourself say a 20s 4p pack and you know that would work fine for some of the bikes that we like to make and have it sustain a draw of 100 amps comfortably at 25 amps per parallel group hopefully this would allow for more than the 500 cycle times that they're allowing or that they're listing the batteries can do at, at the 50 amp discharge rate in the graphics they're actually not listing this as recommended for e-bikes they're saying power tools and, and garden tools so perhaps that's explaining why they have or why they've gone for this like minus 40c i mean it definitely makes sense here in canada because power tools get used a great deal in in sub-zero conditions it's claimed that these cells are in production this year but i haven't seen any for sale anywhere and i've done a lot of looking so if you have seen these let me know in the comments i'd really like to see these get properly tested so that we can see how they stack up against uh, the molly cell p42a which is really the one that everyone's going for to build high power e-bike packs the second cell on the other side is the 58e and this is a higher energy density but a lower discharge rating of 3c and that works out to about 15 amps i believe it's the same capacity as the samsung 50e which is uh, five amp hours so I, I think they're kind of going for that sort of market with this with this cell so based on that capacity and the the 15 amp limit kind of for continuous discharge like it's the peak so you would reduce the life of the cell running it at that 15 amps all the time but you could make you know a 5p e-bike battery with these and run it at you know 40 amps continuously for, for short periods and still have a battery that, that lasts you a long time they've got this five star safety rate and i've no idea what that means uh, it doesn't say anywhere during the information that i could find as to what these cells do that would make them safer than you know any other lithium ion chemistry I, I know why lithium ferrous polymer cells are safer but this is another lithium ion so I, i'd like to know what it is about these cells that that's making them give this five star safety rating because otherwise it's just it's just meaningless blurb battery safety is is one of those things that is going to become more and more prevalent so like if that's something that people want me to look into then then i can do that so I'm going to leave it here for this week. If you have comments or questions or want to discuss any of this, then feel free to post them in the comments or jump on Discord. I'm going to do another one of these next week with some different things. If anyone wants to suggest anything, want me to talk about anything, um, let me know. I hope everyone has an awesome weekend. Uh, huge thanks to all the channel members. Really appreciate all your support. And I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.